the consumer is giving great trust to science and technology. And by pure coincidence, our industry is uh, combining science and technology to develop innovative packaging solutions for a more sustainable world. And the key pillars that we're using are the responsible operation, smart solution for today, already now solution for tomorrow, what we are here to discuss today, is how, are we, how we partner with, uh, for change with all our partners, that are the brand owners, that are the consumer, that are the recyclers. All of us in Italy, we have been uh, traveling on, on a train, and if you go on a train, you see that uh, a, a PT bottle that is totally recyclable has been replaced either with a can or with a food carton packaging which generates, both of them, more CO2 when they are recycled. And on the carton packaging, you even read that is, is written into a label, a very nice label, reduce CO2 packaging. Reduce versus what? not versus the alternative packaging, but if you go and try to find out the certification, it means only that the company producing the carbon packaging has a special program in place to reduce CO2, but nothing, nothing against, nothing in terms of comparison with the other alternative packaging. Uh, I am fond of ice cream, so there is a quite large uh, uh, multinational company that is uh, using, was using in the past a polypropylene packaging that was fully recyclable and has been replaced with uh, a, a, a combined effort made by a, a paper, a paper bio bay and paper carton, let's say, and a bio based film. The combination of the paper and the bio based film is not recyclable. So we are replacing something recyclable with something that is not. So, uh, replace, replacing plastic in packaging has negative effect. Generally, 3.6 times more, more heavy, heavier the packaging that uh, you use to protect the food. Increase of CO2 emission by roughly 2.7% and increase in energy by roughly 2.2%. We are working with the entire value chain. Here we have today valuable presenters that are talking about what they are doing inside the value chain. Uh, we want, uh, first of all, that the public confidence in uh, virgin PET should be maintained also in recycled PET because uh, in the last, uh, since uh, PET has been uh, introduced in the market, we never had any health issue that is extremely important. And we want that also recycled PET maintains the same uh, the same uh, record. We need, uh, as I said earlier, a, a control, a certification system valid for all Europe, a unified, if possible, certification system. Unfair competition should be sanctioned. We cannot admit unfair competition. We are investing millions of euros to, uh, to change our production line, to modify how we operate. We need to be protected. And consumer safety must be maintained and innovation should be not be unintentionally blocked. Here I mean that uh, on top of mechanical recycling, we need chemical recycling. We cannot differentiate from the legislative point of view between chemical and mechanical. From 2011 to today, we recycled 67 billion PET bottles, but we want to go further. By 2025, we plan to recycle 50 billion post-consumer PET bottles every single year. We're investing up to 1.5 billion US dollars to increase our recycling capacities. Building, by building recycling infrastructure, we divert PET waste away from landfill and incineration and back into the circular economy. Because we use post-consumer PET bottles as feedstock for new bottles, we give waste an economic value. This drives improvements in waste collection systems, meaning less waste and cleaner environments. Our state-of-the-art recycling facilities across Europe will play an important part in delivering the circular economy for PET bottles and put Europe at the heart of the future global circular economy. So I'm proud to say PET bottles are fully recyclable. PET bottles have clear design for recycling specifications and are widely collected and recycled into new bottles. By 2030, 9 out of 10 PET bottles in Europe will be collected as per the SUP, 
up from 6 out of 10 today. Because of this, PET is the most recycled plastic packaging in the world and in Europe, with an active secondary market trading bales of collected post-consumable bottles right now. Treating all plastics the same, regardless of their recyclability, is as much greenwashing as claiming your packaging is recyclable when it's not. Together, we must challenge the misperceptions around fully recyclable and widely collected plastics like PET. Allowing th these misperceptions to continue as a type of green. This is because it denies the honest truth that unlike a lot of plastics, PET is recycled in practice and at scale. We are considering uh, responsibility for every stakeholder. We are fostering consumers' responsibility. What we have also heard before, establishing local and regional closed loop is our target and our aim. There we, need, we also need partners and def that, that's definitely one of the most important ones. Uh, we, ha we have to ensure the traceability of the PCR materials. We see the problem we are currently is currently there are no measures in place to verify the content of recycling material in a PET bottle. Trust in numbers printed on a label is very likely not the best control. Options to get a reliable answer is that first we need certification of material usage by independent and authorized institutes for organizations at the converter sites. An analytical measurements on the final product has to be the goal. There is not enough material available on the market, especially with the target from the European Union coming up. And, uh, and despite the high prices, we do not see that they reject uh, their targets. So they are really following the targets and we have to fulfill also the expectations of the market and therefore it's very, very important that we increase the collection rates. But we have to avoid litter, we have also responsibility and we have to push for the circularity and we have to establish also a good recycling environment so that we are succeeding in the future. How do we fight? How do we fight? Uh, how do we fight all that? It's first, as I said, to mobilize the whole industry. As you can see, you have CPME number one, you have the producers, you have the converters, you have the recyclers, you have the ink manufacturers, the label manufacturers, everybody is in the same, everybody is in the same uh, boat, if I may put it this way. So there you are, you have uh, Coca-Cola, you have the bread owners, you have Henkel, name it, you have the Dow's of this world, you have, of course, Alpla, who just spoke, you have converters, so we're all there. What's very, very interesting, as you can see, you can see now that here you have the, the master batch, m the machinery uh, manufacturers, the uh, ever, you know, glue, because glue is extremely important. Why is that? Uh, why, why? Because when we have a problem, it has to be solved. We have also a, uh, a campaign that we've done in 2021 where the idea was to raise awareness around the merits of PET amongst both the stakeholders and it's and in, and, well, not a, a European country, in European countries, okay? Thanks to uh, CPME, uh, Alpla, and uh, Indorama, for example, and we've raised, managed to raise 500,000, uh, 480,000 euros. We're trying to go another one next year. When we talk about uh, ecological transition for us that are being used to use uh, fossil feedstock means uh, a completely change of a way we operate. We have to move from uh, oil-based products on products that are used in wastes as a key feedstock for our production. And this means a paradigm change.